Hi, we are now going to learn about a very important electrical component which is called a capacitor. You have already probably seen a capacitor. If you open the fan, there is this big cylinder inside it that is a capacitor. Any electronic equipment you open up, you will see on the circuit board objects that look like this. These are capacitors. Capacitors come in many different sizes and shapes. Look at these. These are all cylindrical. This capacitor, this huge one says 4700 microfarad. This small one here says 100 microfarad. And you can see all these capacitors. They look like blobs with wires, whereas these look like cylinders, right? And if you see this one, it looks a little weird, right? This has a knob that you can turn and that will change things around here. This is a variable capacitor. You have actually probably used a variable capacitor without even knowing it. For example, in an FM radio, when you are trying to tune for the correct frequency, you are turning a knob. What is that knob? That is this knob. When you turn it, the capacitor value changes. So you can see that capacitors are used in a wide variety of places. So understanding them well is going to be very important. Let us start first with the symbol for a capacitor. There are two common symbols. One is this one, basically two parallel lines. The other one has this line and an arc. This symbol, we are going to treat it as if it is the same as this symbol. Though there is a small difference, this is an electrolytic capacitor. So only this flat side can be positive. There is no such constraint here. You can have this plus that minus or that plus this minus for this kind of a capacitor. And so we are going to mainly focus only on this kind of capacitor. In a question, if you see that symbol, treat it as if it is the same as this one. Now, this capacitor is what we are going to use. Okay, So basically two parallel lines. Now, why is that the symbol for a capacitor? Why two parallel lines? Because most of the capacitors that we are using are made up of two flat parallel plates, two parallel plates. So basically two metal plates that are separated by a gap. So one plate which has charge plus Q, another plate which has charge minus Q with a small gap. So I must bring them close to each other. How did I get the plus Q minus Q? Basically you are connecting these with wires and this, these wires are connected to a battery. What the battery does is to take electrons from this top plate and it moves it to the bottom plate. So the top plate gets a net charge of plus Q. The bottom plate gets minus Q, equal opposite charges. Okay, now you might be wondering, but there are two metal plates very close to each other, positive and negative. Won't the charges attract? Won't they come in and touch? Yes, they will. To prevent that, we put an insulating sheet in between. It is called a dielectric sheet or a dielectric plate. We put that so that it prevents these metal sheets from coming in and touching each other. So you can now see why that is the symbol for a capacitor. Basically this sheet and this sheet connected by wires, connected by wires. Okay. So it makes sense that that is the symbol. But wait a minute. If this is how a capacitor looks, none of these are looking like this. Right. They are all looking like cylinders. Whereas this looks very different. Ah, because if I had a large capacitor like this, large sheet, because if I want a decent capacitor, I must have a large sheet. Now, a small electronic object, how can it accommodate such a large sheet? So what do we do? We take this and we roll it up like a carpet. So if I roll it up like a carpet like this, so here is the metal sheet. You can see the dielectric, then the metal sheet, right? All I've done is to take this and then I've rolled it up like this. And this wire is here, this wire is there. And so once I combine it like this and I cover it up, it's going to start looking like this or like this. Okay, so I hope you have now understood that this is what we are using as capacitors in all of these circuits. Okay, now the first question that comes up is it's all fine. A capacitor is basically two metal sheets and all that. But what is a capacitor really used for? And the most common answer is that it is used for storing charge. Unfortunately, this answer is wrong. It is not used for storing charge. Why? Because remember I told you that if I take a capacitor, I'm actually taking charge electrons from this plate and putting it there. So if I had a capacitor like that, I'm going to pull the electrons from here and I'm going to put it there. So this plate will become positively charged. 
by the same amount that plate will become negatively charged so it will have minus q this has plus q that has minus q what is the total charge on the capacitor zero net charge on a capacitor is always zero always zero plus q minus q always plus q minus q if this plate is plus q that is minus q if that plate was plus q this will be minus q so what is the idea of storing charge the net charge is zero but there is a difference Usually net charge is zero where the plus and minus are on top of each other, right? Whereas there is a clear charge separation. So a capacitor is used for separating charges, not storing charges. And when you separate charges, you have to spend energy. That energy is stored in the capacitor. So a capacitor stores electrical energy by separating charges. So capacitor is used for storing energy, not storing charges. How is it storing the energy? By separating the charges. Okay, fine. But how is this useful? Well, it turns out that this charge that is stored can be used to compensate for voltage fluctuations. When you have a voltage fluctuating, this can supply. Whenever you want some extra current, this will supply the current. Okay, it will make sure that the voltage doesn't vary too much. So that's very useful in many situations. It can also be used to supply huge amount of current suddenly. For example, if you take a camera and you press the button, you have this flash coming on, right? So suddenly this huge amount of light has to come, which requires a large amount of current. A battery can't supply that kind of current, but a capacitor can. So when you connect the flash here, all this charge will flow through from this side to that side in a fraction of a second. So the entire stored energy is sent through the flash Okay, basically the charge is sent through the flash with that energy and then the flash basically sends out a huge amount of light. So you are driving huge currents using a capacitor. You can see that the capacitor is used in many different ways. It is used to tune frequencies in a radio. It is used to send huge amounts of current. It is used to make sure that voltage fluctuations don't occur. So a capacitor is an extremely versatile and a very, very useful device. Let us now study the properties of a capacitor. The most important property of a capacitor is its capacitance. Let us try and understand what is capacitance. Okay, So you know that a capacitor symbol has these two straight lines and they represent the two metal plates separated by a small gap with a dielectric in between. Right? These two metal plates to keep them separate you use this dielectric and how do we get these charges to separate. We connect these wires to a battery. The battery pulls the electrons from this plate and because the electrons get out this way and go there, this becomes positively charged and the bottom plate gets negatively charged. This is plus Q and since the electrons come here, this becomes minus Q. Symbolically, I will say that the electrons are being pulled out from here and are put there. So that plate becomes plus Q, the bottom plate becomes minus Q. What about the net charge? Net charge is zero, but there is charge separation. You know, whenever there is charge separation, there will be electric fields. So there will be field lines like this from the plus charge to the minus charge. Some lines will even go like that. But if you have electric field lines, you have electric field. And if you have electric field, you will have potential drop. So because there is charge separation, there is electric field. And because there is electric field, there is potential drop between the plates. Well, there is potential drop between any two points. We are interested in the potential drop between the plates. Okay. Let us say that the potential drop between the positive plate and the negative plate is V. So that means from here to there, the potential drop is V. And the question that I am interested in is, is this V related to the Q? Yes, obviously it must be related to the Q. Why? Because Q is the one producing the electric fields and the electric field is producing the potential drop. So clearly V must be related to the Q. But directly calculating V seems to be complicated. But there is one simplification we can do. Let us think. Suppose I doubled Q. Remember when you are doubling this Q, it becomes plus 2Q. You are taking electrons from here and putting it there. So this will become minus 2Q. So everywhere the charge has doubled. Now, if everywhere the charge doubles, that's important, everywhere it has to double, then the electric field is proportional to the charge. So, everywhere the electric field will double. If everywhere electric field doubles, the potential drop is proportional to the electric field. So, the potential drop will double. So, doubling the charge will double the potential drop. 
tripling the charge will triple the potential drop. What does that tell you? Oh, it tells us that the potential drop is directly proportional to the charge. V is proportional to Q. Very simple idea, right? Doubling Q doubles the electric field everywhere, doubles the V. Tripling Q triples V. So V is proportional to Q. Okay. Whenever we have proportionality, we can make it an equality by putting a constant of proportionality, right? So I can write V is equal to KQ or CQ, right? Generally. But for some historical reasons, this constant, instead of writing it as C, they wrote it as 1 by C. Don't worry about why they did that. Main point is this is a constant. That's it. So V is a constant times Q because V is proportional to Q. The constant is written as 1 by C. So V is equal to Q by C or Q is equal to CV. This is the most important formula that you need to remember. Q is equal to CV. What is C? C is that constant of proportionality, right? Reciprocal of that constant of proportionality, which is also a constant. This constant is called capacitance. C is called the capacitance. It depends on the capacitor. So this particular capacitor may have C value 3 units, some units. A different capacitor may have C value 7 units. Something else may have 25 units. It depends on the capacitor. Okay, so C is called the capacitance. So you can see that Q is equal to CV, C is Q by V, C is Q by V. When you write C is Q by V, it makes us feel like maybe C depends on Q and V. No, C does not depend on Q and V. Okay, actually you can say Q depends on C or you can say V depends on C. But C is independent of Q and V. Why am I saying that? Because if I double Q, V will double. So Q by V will remain the same. Triple Q, V will triple. So Q by V will remain the same. Right? So C will remain the same. So changing Q will change V. C will remain the same. So C does not depend on Q or V. Then what does it depend on? Ah, it depends on the overall structure of the capacitor. Right? Now suppose I increase the size of the plates, I make this little bit fatter this way, make it longer that way, okay, or change the dielectric, all that will matter. So C depends on the geometry of the conductors involved in the capacitor. It also depends on the dielectric. So C depends on the capacitor's shape, the sizes, okay, the geometry of it, the dielectric, the insulator that I am using, depends on all that. It does not depend on Q and V. Q depends on C. Q depends on C. Of course, it also depends on V. But C does not depend on Q or V. Remember that. Now, it's all fine. But why do we call this capacitance, capacity, right? Capacitance, capacity, all that. Basically, where is it coming from? Let us think about this. Q equal to CV. Long time ago, when they were actually building these capacitors, okay, they had fixed batteries with a fixed voltage. Suppose that V was fixed, then how do you get more charge? I'm going to call it stored charge. You know that the total charge is zero, but charge separated. But how do I get more stored charge? Well, you must use another object with a larger capacity. So this word capacity comes from the idea that for a fixed V, more C will mean more Q. You want to store more charges, you must have more capacity. That's where the word capacitance came from. So the word capacity, capacitance and capacitor all came from that formula because they had a fixed battery. So V was fixed, V was not changing. So that means if you used a larger capacitance, larger capacity object, then you could store more charge. So obviously it had more capacity to store charge. That's how they thought. Okay, so more C meant more Q. This is not something that makes sense today because obviously you can change V very easily now. And so with the same capacitor, you can store more charge. So, but remember that that is where the word came from originally. That's why we use the word capacity or capacitance for talking about this. And that's why you, you have to use this 1 by C in the formula because Q was basically CV. C was telling you how much charge you could store. That's how the constant came to become 1 by C in the proportionality. Anyway, what I want you to remember is this formula. The charge stored or rather separated 
in the capacitor stored on each plate in the capacitor is basically C times V most important formula let us try and understand this formula a little more let us now look at the relationship between charge potential drop and capacitance a little more closely I'm going to use this capacitor with capacitance C and I'm going to apply a potential drop V across it how do I find out its charge Q equal to CV that will give me the charge but that only tells me that one of the plates has plus Q one of the plates has minus Q right it only gives me the absolute value of the charge how do I find out which plate is plus and which plate is minus ah remember that the direction of the potential drop is from the positive plate to the negative plate the potential drop is this way so the top plate must be positive so it must have plus Q the bottom plate is negative so it must have minus Q you can also remember that the positive charge is on the plate with the higher potential potential drop is this way so top plate must have higher potential so that must be positive bottom plate must be negative okay so we use q equal to cv to find the magnitude of the charge the absolute value of the charge then we use the direction of the potential drop to find which plate is positive which plate is negative now we have been talking about capacitance but what about the unit of capacitance well you can say c is q by v q is in coulombs charge is in coulombs v is in volts so coulomb by volt will give me the unit for capacitance that has a name it is called a farad this is the si unit for capacitance farad we write it as f coulomb by volt but one farad is a very large capacitor so in most situations it's too big for us to use so we would like to have a smaller unit and so the more commonly used unit is called the microfarad mu f we use this greek symbol to represent micro mu f now one microfarad is 10 to the power of minus 6 farads remember farad is the si unit whenever you have microfarad you must bring this mu into the calculation carefully let us learn how to use all this by looking at a few examples so here i have a 6 farad capacitor i'm going to apply a potential drop of 2 volts like that what will be the charge on the capacitor q equal to cv so 6 farad into 2 volts 6 into 2 12 farad into volts is coulomb so 12 coulomb so the charge on this capacitor is 12 coulomb but which plate has plus 12 coulomb which one has minus 12 for that you must look at the direction of the potential drop from positive to negative so the direction of the potential drop is this way so this must be positive that must be negative so this is the positive plate so this has 12 coulomb and the other plate has minus 12 coulomb let us look at another example so here i have this capacitor which has capacitance 5 microfarad 5 microfarad i'm going to apply a potential drop like that 3 volts what will be the charge on this capacitor q equal to cv so 5 microfarad into 3 volts 5 into 3 15 farad into volts is coulomb the micro don't forget so you will get micro coulomb so the charge is 15 micro coulomb okay now which plate is positive direction of the potential drop from positive to negative plate right so this is the direction of the potential drop so this plate must be positive and so this side must have plus 15 micro coulomb and the other side will have minus 15 micro coulomb so now i hope you have understood how to use this formula q equal to cv to find out what is the charge magnitude the absolute value of the charge and then to find out which plate is positive which plate is negative you use the direction of the potential drop mm -hmm.